I was driving this truck around and all of a sudden it was running really rough. I had a loss of power and a hesitation, a big one, under acceleration. At that point, I decided that I need to limp it back in here so we can investigate further because there's definitely a problem with the engine. An engine running rough is often caused by a misfire. Now a misfire can happen for many different reasons because there's a lot of components involved in properly running an engine. You could have anything as simple as a vacuum leak that can cause a misfire, so whether a, a hose is broken or disconnected or just in bad condition. Now excess air is getting into the engine that is not metered by your mass airflow sensor, therefore causing it to run rough. You could have a fuel delivery issue, so maybe a bad fuel pump, fuel injector, maybe a clogged fuel filter. That can also do it. Maybe you have some component in the ignition system that went bad. So maybe you have a distributor, spark plug wires, spark plugs themselves could be worn out or broken. Sometimes the porcelain cracks on them. Or a bad ignition coil, that can also cause it. Uh, or wires going to the ignition coils or even the fuel injectors. Any wiring that has gone bad can interrupt the signal. The worst case is actually going to be mechanical failure. So if you have uh, a timing issue, whether it's a belt or chain, if it skips timing, well, that's not going to be great. Or maybe a worn down cylinder wall, worn piston rings, uh, a burnt or bent valve, anything like that, that's going to require some serious fixing. But no matter the cause of your misfire, you can get the parts to fix it at oneauto.com. I believe the easiest and most efficient way to get the problem solved is to get a scan tool, scan the codes, because if you have a misfire, you have a check engine light, and if you have a check engine light, you have codes pointing you in the right direction. So I plugged in a scan tool. Like I said, I didn't want to just waste my time throwing parts at it, and I pulled the codes. It said P0355. Now that's a very specific code because usually what you get with a misfire is anywhere between a P0300, which is a random misfire, and then if it starts at P0301 up to however many cylinders you have, four, six, eight, the last two digits are the number of said cylinder. So if it was a cylinder misfire in number five, it would be a P0305. In my case, this computer has detected that the ignition coil for five is not responding. So that gives me even more of a clue as to what's going on, but I still wanted to look at some live data to see other components and how they're functioning. If you want to take this one step further, download our diagnostic app, search for your trouble code, and you'll find some related videos that should help you find a solution. So I had a, a misfire count on there, which obviously is going up because that cylinder is not firing. And I also selected injector fault because I wanted to make sure all the injectors, according to the computer, are functioning properly, which it said no error. So I'm good on that. I can rule out fuel delivery issues. So I'm going to focus on the ignition coil side of things or, you know, the ignition. I will still pull the spark plug and inspect it. It's obviously a good idea to look at it, but the ignition coil seems, seems to be a fault. So let's look at that. So I have the old ignition coil out right here. What you want to do first is inspect it visually for damage. A lot of times these boots can break or melt or get torn. Uh, mine's okay. This one's a little bit swollen. A lot of times they can also get really swollen if you have um, a lot of oil built up in here. Not so much the case here. There's always a spring inside. The spring can also be damaged. Mine's all right. The top of the ignition coil often can crack. So watch for cracks, uh, could melt, who knows. Uh, just basically physical damage can occur to the ignition coil. Look at the electrical connector. If it's broken or melted or has corrosion in it, that's a problem. Do the same to the vehicle harness on the, uh, the connector on the vehicle side. Mine looks okay. So what I can determine is that inside, internally, it is done. It's just a dead ignition coil. Obviously, it's no longer responding to any sort of power input. There is one good way to test this, and that is if you have a multimeter, put it on the resistance setting. I just have it set to 200 ohms because that's the lowest, uh, lowest setting. Uh, you could either do a continuity test or you could just do a resistance check, but no matter what, if it's a dead coil, it's not going to show anything. So I'm touching the leads right now, and nothing. I got nothing. I'll set it to continuity. It's not going to measure resistance. It's just going to measure a closed or open circuit. I got nothing. Just as a reference, I have this new one here. Touching the leads. We do have continuity. And if I measure resistance, we have resistance. So obviously, this coil is completely dead. It's done. So now that we've identified the issue, 
let's replace the ignition coil with a brand new one from oneauto.com. So I went on oneauto.com and got myself some ignition coils, but not just any, I went for the performance ones since I had the option to choose. And you might ask, what are performance ignition coils? Well, on the outside, they might not look that different other than the color on the top. However, inside is where the difference is because these have a different coil winding so that they can produce a slightly higher output for the spark plug. In older, more worn out vehicles, it ensures a nice, strong spark. This truck has over 200,000 miles on it and it's over 20 years old. So I wanted to make sure that all eight spark plugs can fire evenly and with a nice, strong spark. Speaking of spark plugs, actually, you want to make sure you replace those at the same time as you do your ignition coils. I highly recommend that. That way you refresh the entire ignition system at the same time. With all of my spark plugs replaced and my brand new performance ignition coils installed, I always recommend clearing the codes before you go any further. That way the computer can communicate with the new coils properly with no history in its uh, memory. So at this point, you can take it for a road test.